Spicy hello to all my favorite listeners out there. This is Diana Price, and you're listening to Diana's Spicy Business Talk Radio. And guess what? We are celebrating Social Media Week this week. So we have facts, we have figures, we have a lot of great stuff that we're going to bring to you today. It's all about how can social media benefit you? How can social media benefit you? Because there's so many people that think, I'm afraid to get on social media for, you know, and I was like that too, so I'm going to raise my hand and be right along there with you. You know, but once you understand the value of social media, especially for your business, we're talking business. That's why this show is called Spicy Business Talk. We want you to get value out of what we do and what we bring to you in the content. And let me just give you a little bit of background about Spicy Business Talk. You can get us online at, uh, we can actually go actually to our Facebook page and give us a nice big, great big like, and it's it's facebook.com, Spicy Business Talk, and then there's also space, facebook.com, Diana. Price Associates. And if you check our website, dianapriceassociates.com, you'll see that what we do is we create exceptional customer experiences. Our firm is all about people, the people that we serve and the people that we are always around and how and, and how we actually interact with people. So it's it's if, if you're not serving people, you're in the wrong business. You're completely in the wrong business. So this week, Social Media Week, we're going to be talking more about how you serve customers and how you can get more out of social media for your business. So, you know, I've got a lot of facts and figures here. So you know where I think I'm going to start? I'm going to start with, this is what I'm going to start. I'm, I'm going to start with, you know, social media and how it's really, how can really speed up the development, your your business development. So, you know, if you want to follow me and, and give me some comments, I'd really love to have you do that. So why don't you head on over to our Facebook page and just give, give us some comments there. It's facebook.com spicy business talk. So the first thing I want to share with you is my passion for creating exceptional customer experiences. And I want to give you a little background because when I started my business, and it's Diana Price and Associates, my tagline is creating exceptional customer experiences. I was, I have been told all these crazy things about being online, about having your face attached to your brand, about all these things about, oh, if you're on Facebook, you have to, you know, and it's true, whatever social media you're on, you have to be very careful because your brand can really be be affected by what by what's out there and what you put out there. So all of that's very true, but it can also bring a stigma that's completely untrue. So I want to I want to share some things about what I had to go through today, what I had to go through in my business and what I learned. You know, when you learn things, when I learn things, I want to share it with you. I want to teach you everything that I learned. So you, you know that my passion is creating exceptional customer experiences. So what does that mean in the social media realm? What does that mean for me? For example, when I develop my website, I said, okay, I don't want my picture associated with my website. I don't want, you know, there's a lot of things I said I don't. You make your money rules. You make your social media rules. You make your website rules. You make your life rules. You make your family rules. And that was just one of my rules. Now, a, w one thing that I really wanted, I wanted more leads. I wanted to capture more business. I wanted to develop you know, a, a, a following. I wanted more, more, more people to follow me. Okay, so I thought, well, you know, I really don't want to get into social media, but maybe 
I should at least look into it to see what's going on with it. And I did. And I looked into it. And I am having some amazing results as, as just because I opened my mind and I confronted my comfort zone when it relates to, as it relates to social media. So whether you a startup, I've got some notes here I'm going to share with you. Whether you a new business, a startup business, if you're an entrepreneur where you're a very, very, very large company, if you are participating in social media, guess what? It's going to bring your business up to a whole new level. Now, there's no promises, but you will see more growth, more clients. And, you know, the best thing for me is I started an Internet marketing business. I think I told you about that a couple times. And I don't have to do cold calls. Cold calls is a part of everyone's business. I, and if you're, if you're in business, you have to sell. You have to sell and you have to market. So let's spice things up a little bit spicy business talk. Let's just spice things up a little bit. Do you know anyone that says, ah, blogging is just way too much, takes too, takes too much time, takes too much of my time. I don't want to do it. I'd rather go out and, you know, do whatever. I'd rather take pictures. <laughs> I'd rather talk to my clients. And, and I, I really get that. I completely get that because I was that way too. Um, but Tell me what your expertise is. Think about, think about that. What is your expertise? Because your expertise allows you to establish your presence. And it doesn't matter where you are with social media. Now, if you don't have social media to back you, if you have traditional marketing methods, that's very good too. It just takes longer. Social media helps you speed up the development process. It helps you leapfrog over the competition if you have a plan and if you know the process to follow, okay? Because of social media, you can do business. Let me tell you how I do it. I do business not only locally, but my brand reaches internationally. It reaches nationwide. So a lot of my clients, people that I interact with, people that I help, people that I give advice to when it comes to what I'm doing, not only with creating exceptional customer experiences, but also the startup with your pocket cash, which is a viral blogging platform. I can reach people anywhere in the world. And that is the beauty. That is the absolute beauty of social media marketing. And I'm going to get into a lot more in just a moment. We're going to be right back and we're going to get into how you're going to be using social media to speed up your business development. So bear with us and we'll be right back. This is Diana Price and you're watching Spicy Business Talk Radio Network. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Diana Price, and you're listening to Diana's Spicy Business Talk Radio Network. 
We just started talking about how social media can really improve and speed up your business development. The first thing was boundaries. There are no boundaries. Your expertise can go all over the place, all over the world. So with that in mind, think about what you're good at. And when I say think about it, know what you're good at, but ask other people. Don't just think that, okay, I'm good at this. And because sometimes we, 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 you know, we have all these preconceived ways of how, how we are and other people don't really think we're the same way. So ask some of your close friends, ask your business associates what they think about your expertise. What do they think you are really good at? Okay. So when you get that answer, see how it relates to what you said about yourself. And then what I want you to do is look at how you can use your passion to make some profits, to make to make some money, to put some cash in your pocket. That's exactly what I did with creating exceptional customer experiences. I love teaching people how to treat each other. I love the customer service. The entire industry needs to be reformed, in my opinion. And that is why I developed a business completely around centering customer service, leadership, employee engagement, entitlement. I speak about it. I blog about it. I make money doing it. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So number one, your expertise. Really get that down. Know exactly what that is. And you may want to have one or two, you know, the first choice, second choice. Okay, so that's going to be a huge opportunity for you. Now, social media will help you manage your relationships with your customers. I told you I love customer service. Now, when you start, when you get your blog, your website and everything available, when all of a sudden you're getting more traffic there, that relationship with that customer, relationships are so key. If you don't have a great relationship with your customer, with your business partner, you might as well not be in business because you are, you're the first impression of your business is going to be the last impression. So make it a good impression. So it's really important that when you start targeting new relationships that you know how to handle them, you know how to respond and you respond respond very quickly and you do it in an exceptional way because when you exceed your customers expectations guess what they'll keep coming back and they'll tell others and they'll be your mouthpiece they'll start referring you that's cool that happens to me and I love it I absolutely love it so your business can target new relationships and social media can help you do that I hope you get that all right let's move on to number three when you start your business online, and I'm specifically talking about social media blogging, using that as a platform to develop your business, you want to be very, very, very clear about your intentions because you don't want to be all over the map. You want you don't want to start off, you know, saying, "Yeah, I want to do this," but you don't do that. You do something else. The next big, bright and shiny object comes in 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 persuades you, and you do that. So be very, very clear. Now you can have different funnels with your passion. For example, with my business, I love the part of, you know, I love the speaking part of customer service. So there's different funnels that I have with customer service. You know, I teach mentality. I teach service mentality. I teach how to build a culture. You know, business culture is huge. So it always has to be centered around your customer, a customer centric focus. And I teach people how that is and how to use it and what to do, how to really, really carry it out and implement it. So it, so when I say you can really use whatever your, your, your vision is, your, your, your passion, you can have different funnels, but make sure it's, it's all related to uh, that, that one thing that you want to do and be clear about those intentions. Because when you're clear about it, then you can personalize it. You want your business to have a human touch. Social media can really distort the human, the, the human values of, you know, your, your business if you let it. Because all of a sudden, you're texting, you're tweeting, you're not face-to-face -face anymore. So it can really dehumanize your your business if if you let it so you know you want to spice it up you want to you know get some interaction going you want to get your customers to 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 answer some questions you want to ask them questions and make some comments so and when you get those comments make sure you respond to them it's really important that you respond to those comments so so what was the first one 
using your expertise. Number two was social media helps you build relationships and make sure those relationships are exceptional when you start building them. Number three, have clear intentions about what you want your business to be, how you want it to, to look, feel, and make sure it's personalized. You humanize the experience that your customers get with you. So then we're going to go to the last one, and then we're going to go to some fun things about stats about women. That's going to be fun. So I'm finding with my business that my sales conversion, my sales cycle is shortened with social media. So, you know, if I, if traditional ways I still have, you know, sometimes we get a warm lead and those are the best ways. Getting a warm lead, someone refers you, we, we, get, we do that and that, that's awesome. But when you have social media, you're able to really develop a campaign and see how that pa- campaign actually goes. And uh, you can really shorten the conversion times for, um, for your sales. So you want to leverage the power of social media by really exploring how you can get more profits faster using it. And I can get into more detail with that, but I just kind of want to give you a real quick overview. So when you understand what your customers want, you want them, when, you're, when you know what they want, you want to give them what they want. I want to be clear about that. <laughs> you want to give them exactly what they want because people are buying solutions to their problems. They don't really care about your product unless it provides a solution to them. And you know what else I'm finding? I'm finding that my customers and people, they want to know why you're in business. Are you just in business to make money, to complete a transaction. It's so important that you build trust and that you allow people to get to know you, to get to know you on a personal level. Because when you build trust, and now that I'm blogging a lot, people are following me. And people understand what I'm all about. They know it's about the customer service part of what I do. So be clear to yourself. Be really clear so your customers understand that you really have that human touch and why you're in business. And it's not all about the money because if it's all about the money for you, you're in the wrong business. It won't succeed very well. When you, um, I just want to share another little thing before I get into women and what women do and why it's so important to to really market to women. When you start building your business online, when social media becomes a part of your marketing strategy, people will be able to learn a lot more about you because your information is out there. It's out there. So you have to really control what is out there and how it shows up. So when you're blogging, you know, if, if you're always asking for something rather than providing value and giving content, you're going to be known for that. So if you, if you head over to my blogs, for example, uh, word, what is it, Diana, <laughs> Diana Price Associates.wordpress.com and also yourpocketcash.com, you'll find that I talk about blogging, I talk about customer service, I talk about how we treat people, I talk about, you know, how we can make things better. So you have to really define your niche. You have to define your core values and your core and stick to it. When you stick to it, you'll always have something to come back with. And when no one's looking, you'll be operating within your core values. I hope you get that. So we're going to switch over to a fun some, – I did some research for this whole social media week. So I want to share with you if, you, if you have some a pen and a paper, you probably want to get that out. I'm going to be sharing with you – something that's really near and dear to me because I'm a woman, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, social media is going for everybody, but the top 30 stats that you need to know if your business just happens to be marketing to women. Marketing to women is, it's a little different than marketing to men or the masses. And I'm going to tell you why, because in a few years, you know, studies say that, ni- I'm not going to say 91%, but there's going to be a whole huge percent of women. They're going to be making a lot more money than men according to stats. And I can give you all my stats here because I have them. I always, I tell you, I tell you I'm evidence-based. Everything I bring to you is, is, is all evidence-based. So here, here's one. Women that are earning and spending and influence spending, they, they spend and they influence spending a lot greater 
than than men do. And this is a fact. And I'm getting my stats from the nextweb.com. Okay, and I'll give you some more stats on that later. So 91% of women say that advertisers don't understand them. So what is it? Advertisers don't understand women. So maybe the advertisers are marketing to the masses instead of narrowing the niche to women. And let me show you, let me, let me share this with you. There's, there's a few stats that marketers, you know, probably misunderstand. Here, earning power, the average American woman is expected to earn more than the male. I think I just told you that by the, the date is 2028. By 2028, the average American woman is going to be make, making more than the average male. 51% of U.S. private wealth is controlled by who do you think? <laughs> women. I didn't know that. Did you know that? <laughs> so women account for over 50% of all stock ownership in the United States. I have stock. I've got a lot of stock. I sold a lot of it too. Women control more than 60% of all personal wealth in the United States. Did you hear that? 60%. That's huge. 60%. Personal wealth, women control it. That's earning power. Let's talk about spending power. This is a study, again, that I'm talking about marketing to women. It's a study on marketing to women. Spending power. Here's what they say about spending power. Women account for 85% of all customer purchases, including everything from automobiles to health care. Women account for more than 85%. 85%, that means... We have to be making almost all of the decisions, the purchase decisions. Just about all of the purchase decisions are women's decisions. Women make 80% of healthcare decision and 68% of car purchase decisions. That's 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 pretty that's pretty huge. 75% of women identify themselves as primary shoppers for their households. So what does that mean? So if there's a husband and wife in the household, kids, husband, wife, the person that's primary, the person that makes the spending decisions is the woman. So a lot of my girlfriends when we started, a lot of my business associates when we started our businesses, they decided to market directly and focus on women. And that's all they do. They focus on women entrepreneurs. They focus on, you know, women executives. Everything is about women. And now you can see why. Now I can see why. Why they just said it. Now nah, I'm just going for the women. I'm going for the women's market. I know who I am and I know what I like. And so I'm going to focus on women. Women influence $90 billion of consumer electronic pur pur uh, purchases. That was in 2007. So $90 billion of consumer electronic pur uh, purchases. Now, when it comes to electronics, I, I got to admit, most of the times when I ask people questions, I'm asking a guy question. Now, guys know more to me, guys know more about electronics than women do. But when it comes to purchasing, purchasing, that's where the power is. That's where the spending comes in, according to the study in 2007. Nearly 50% of women say that they want more green choices. Now, Green choices are, you know, the healthy things, the, the things that, you know, make, make sure our, our environment is intact. We love stuff like that. I know I do. Even when it comes to my eating, when it comes to my household, the things that I buy, the washing machine that I, that I purchase, the, you know, what's it called, the HE machine. You can only buy all the detergents that are HE specific. All of those things come from women and how we prefer our choices. So, with 37% more likely to pay attention to brands that are committed to environmental causes. That means that you and I and all of us in business have to really be careful with what we're putting out there because, as you can see, we want green stuff. You know, and if you're putting out other stuff, that's going to affect your brand in a huge way. Just a few more things. I talked about women in cars. Women in cars, women buy more of half of the new cars in the United States and influence, as you know, about 80% of the purchases. So, but how many, if, how many times when you go to a car dealership do you see women salespeople? Most of the times they're, I don't know, I think they're men sales guys most of the times. At least I, I haven't bought a new car in, I'd say, <laughs> 
maybe four years, the last time I bought my car, maybe three years, three years old, I decided I was not going to buy a new car. I only wanted a used car. I wanted a one-year-old car because you drive it off the lot and guess what? It's not worth the same thing anymore. Women spend over $200 billion on cars and mechanical services and vehicles each year. So guys, listen up. If you're, if you're in that industry, boy, what a lot of money there. So women request 65% of service work done at dealerships. So I can attest to that. Instead of going to an independent, which I, I do go to independent sometimes, going back to the dealerships is more comfortable because we don't want to get ripped off. We want to know that our money is going to do what we want it to do. And sometimes we'll pay more for that. Okay. So how about mom power? Still talking about women. Mom power. Moms represent $2.4 trillion market. Okay, so when you are starting a business online, think about moms, think about women, think about all the products that women use. Just giving you some clues, Social Media Week. Okay, now here, here listen to this one. 55% of active daily social media moms said they made their first purchase because of a recommendation from a personal review on a blog. I could really get into that one. When you interact, when you have a genuine trust from your clients and they understand that your content is valuable and you make recommendations, yeah, that's why your business development speeds up because the relationship that you build. 18.3 million internet users who are moms read blogs a minimum of once a month. They read a blog a minimum of once a month. 18.3 million internet users who are moms read blogs. In 2014, 63%, that's about 21 million of online moms, will read a blog. That's a lot. And guess what? These are, these are, these are probably stay-at-home moms. So they're reading blogs. They're reading internet. They're, they're on the internet, social media, interacting. Moms mention brands an average of 73 times per week compared to just 57 times per week among males. So when your brand becomes a household name, when large brands become a household name, when you start your brand and it becomes a household name, think about who your market's going to be. Women, men, both. I like both. <laughs> but you can do both. You can do both. 77% of mom bloggers, now listen, there's mom bloggers. Mom bloggers will only write about products or brand whose reputation they approve of. So they may not have a business, but they may have a blog, and they may be talking about the brands and the business that they like. Huge. That is huge for your business. We're almost done. Then we're going to go to another topic. Another 14% will write about brands or products they boycott they don't like, they complain about. Something has happened and it hasn't been fixed. 64% of moms asked other mothers for advice before they purchased a new product. And 63% of all mothers surveyed considered other moms the most credible expert when they have questions. So they go to blogs, then they go to their peer group, their moms, and guess what? That's women sticking with women. Women online, as early as 2000, women were found to have surpassed men and in internet usage. Um, I wasn't sure about that, but it's, it's a stat here. I'm not sure. Guys are on the internet a lot more than we are. And, well, this statistic in 2000 proves me wrong. <laughs> it says no, women are on there more than we are. Here we go. 78% of women in the United States use the internet for product information before making a purchase. So if your product, if your service is valuable and they use that, as I said before, for their buying solutions, they use it for their solutions to their problems. 33% research products and services online before buying offline. Mm, that's interesting. I do that too. Do you do that? I go and I look online and I compare prices and I say, what is this brand? And I compare quality and I compare reviews and there you go. Then I go off and I buy. 33%. So they do this research before they go off and they buy their product. So women account for 58% of all total online spending. 
58% of total online spending. So that means that whenever I buy shoes, whenever I buy my books, <laughs> whenever I buy all of that stuff that I buy, you know, 58% of my money, 58% of all of us are spending and buying these things online. So why wouldn't why wouldn't you focus your blog, your products, your service to the women population? 22% shop online at least once a day. That's huge. Once a day, you know, we're spenders. We're spenders. We love to shop. We love to shop till we drop. So, you know, that goes without saying. 92% pass along information about deals. I do that all the time, about deals or fines to others. My girlfriends and I, we were walking this morning. We have a 5 o'clock meet. Oh, can you stand it? We meet at 5 o'clock, and we walk, and we, you know, we talk, and we walk, and we talk. We talk about business. We talk about what's going on. We're talking about the next RFP we're going to do. We request for proposal and we just talk, 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 talk. And we were, t and we, one, one of the gals would say, hey, have you been to this restaurant? Oh, they have, and we just talk about all these new finds that we have. So we pass along information about these new deals and new finds. So uh, the average number of contacts in their email or mobile list is 171. That's kind of low. <laughs> I think that's kind of low. Uh, the average number of contacts in their email or mobile list is 171. But but that's but it says average, so average is average. That makes sense. And here we go. Seventy six percent want to be part of a special or a select panel. Hmm, that's a good one. That's a good one. Fifty eight percent would toss a TV if they <laughs> if they had to get rid of if they had to get rid of one digital uh, digital device instead of keeping the TV. They'd get rid of the TV and keep keep the digital de device. That is, how many percent is that? What did I say? 58% of those. So that's, hmm. But guess what? I, I, I don't care what anybody says. I'm not getting rid of my laptop. I'm, not, I'm all, all up, no. It's, it, that, that stays with me. That's my laptop. It's not going anywhere. So I hope you enjoyed the women's statistics. We will be right back with more on what can you get out of social media. This is Diana Price, and we're talking spicy business talk. We'll be right back. back. This is Diana Price, and you're listening to Diana's Spicy Business Talk. We're talking about what can you benefit? How can you benefit 
with social media. This is Social Media Week, and there's been so much going on in the Internet and here at our station, and we're just having a blast talking about social media. There's so much going on with social media that you've really got to get in the game. If you're not in the game, and if you're in business, you're, you're missing out. You're really missing out. And if you're not in business, there's so many opportunities for you out there. You know, if you're kind of bored with your job or if you want to, you know, a whole brand new career, you know, as I said earlier, talk and talk to people and take a look at what your expertise is because this is a whole new opportunity on, on the internet now. And it sounds like we have a caller. Do we have a caller? Yeah. All right. Put your iPhones on? Yes. Well, caller, we're talking about Social Media Week, and who are we talking? Who's a... Uh... Hello, this is Diana. We're talking about uh, social media and why you should be involved. Who's on the line with us? Hello? Hello? Can, we, can you hear us? Yeah, I think we lost Can them. you hear us? I think we lost Ah, uh, looks like we lost our caller. We'll Hello? come back. No, we lost no Okay, back. okay. Okay, so continuing, continuing, I, I, I did a blog post earlier, and the blog post was about why you should run your blog as a business, <laughs> and I'm going to review that for you right now, and then I'm going to ask you a series of questions so you can really understand the importance of you getting in this game. There is so much out there. There's not only knowledge, but, you know, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? You know, if you're not happy with your life, and if you're not doing thing ab anything about it at all, it's your own darn fault. So let me just review this blog post. And the blog post was at uh, Spicy Business Talk. Uh, part of it was on my, on my um, Facebook page, and it was also on my www.yourpocketcash.com blog site. So start running your business as a blog. The first thing you got to do is train yourself. What's a blog? Why do I need it? And the most important thing is WordPress blogs are pretty cool. I have two WordPress blogs. One WordPress blog, you know, is I talk all about my corporate stuff. And the other WordPress blog is about not only customer service like I do in the corporate, but I also talk about why you really want to get into blogging. So viral blogging is, is extremely important, but you have to train yourself because you're going to need to learn new things about your blog. You're going to need to keep your training tip top. And this is part of the, the blog post that um, – that I wrote, training is going to better prepare you to ach achieve a successful experience. Because when you start blogging, you can get really, really down. Oh, it's taking so long. Um, I don't know what to blog about. I really don't understand what this is doing for my business. I get all of that. That's why you have to train yourself. You know what I do? I spend time not only listening to videos, I, I have so, so, so many videos that I can't even <laughs> have time to listen to, but I force myself. I plan. I have an action plan. Once a day, I'm listening to something and learning something new about blogging, about syndicating my blog, about why I need to be running it as a business and not just out there frailing and putting things out there that no one's going to even look at. So. Training is extremely important. It's also going to help you enjoy what you do a lot more because, you know, when you understand the background behind it, you're going, oh, I like this. And then you really get into it. You really get into it. So the more prepared you are, the more confident you're going to be. And it reinforces all the good things that you should be doing and why and how it's going to help you in your business. Now, consider these kinds of things that you should be um, when you when you train because sometimes you go oh, I cannot think of one reason why I want to look at this today but make sure that you want your work to be enjoyable because what I do I told you my passion is helping people create exceptional customer experiences so if you know that what you're doing and if your passion is enjoyable you're not going to pick something just because you know somebody told you that if you're passionate about you know I don't know there's so many different things out there you know cash machines that's what I call them you can make cash out of your passions but if you're passionate about it make sure you enjoy it and if you're not passionate about it go on to something else and don't waste your time because when you find something you really like it's going to help propel your success and that's why you want to train training is going to build your confidence it's going to better prepare you to grow it's going to help you take one step 
and then two steps, and then three steps. But if something happens and you have to take two steps backwards for some reason, you'll understand why you're, do why you're doing what you're doing and you'll keep moving forward. You know, I tell, my, I tell my team in my workshops, it takes 21 times to form a habit. So when you get to three, four, or five, and you have to start all over again, you know, oh, be, oh, oh well, you know what your purpose is, so it's okay to do that. When you train, you become more productive, and you understand how to make money. You don't, money is not the first thing, but it's probably one of the reasons that you want to exist. <laughs> you have to exist. You have to pay your bills. I mean, that's, that's a given. So you understand how to make money and not that money is the number one thing that you want to do. There is a difference, okay? When you put your passion into your blogging, you're going to have a higher retention rate because you're going to know exactly what you want to do. So it's important to really learn how to blog effectively. When I run my blog as a business, I want to tell you a couple of things that I've done so far. I have learned how to syndicate, and I'll be sharing that with you in other in our, Actually, As a matter of fact, next week we're going to talk a little bit more detail about blogging. I want to give you a, a real overview now. But you're, you're going to learn all the different sites that you can, you, you can syndicate your blog. And you can also learn how you can play a game. I'll talk to you about this game. It's like a stock market game. If you don't know about this stock market game, it helps you not only build your credibility, it helps you lift your profile, it helps you, you know, just really get a lot more positive popular out there and have more looks, more eyeball, eyeballs on your blog so that, you know, it just, it's just like YouTube. I mean, there's so many different blog platforms that there are. And if you do a blog and you just kind of stick it out there and you say, oh, I did my blog for the day, no one sees it. Why did you do it? It's a waste of time. That's why I'm talking about training. We have a platform, it's a viral blogging platform called Empower Network, and we'll go into that a little bit more. But what it does, it teaches you what to do, how to do. When you're in business, what are the three things that you always have to do? You gotta sell, you gotta sell, <laughs> you gotta sell some more, right? Now, in order to do that, you have to have a culture, you have to have a plan, you have to understand what you want to do. And if you're not doing it the right way, it's not going to happen. So we teach you how to blog and how to blog successfully. If you don't want to use blogging as a platform, use the products and services and teachings to run your own business. That's what I'm doing. The things that you always have to do when you run a business, you have to know your market, you have to, you know, tell people about it. And how do you tell people about it? You have to market. You have to advertise. Do you spend any money? Do you spend any money on your business? How do you advertise your business? You know, and if if you're doing all that, then the leads that you're capturing, are they converting to sales? And if they're not converting to sales, then we have to go back and regroup and kind of think about what it is that you're doing wrong. So a couple things that I've heard recently. I've heard blogging takes too much time. It gets in the way of all the important things that I need to do. I got to write a 500-word blog, a 1,000-word blog? That'll take me forever. It's hard to remember what I learned. Oh, that's when you start doing training. You know, it's, 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 there's so many things in training that I have to work through, and I have to say, okay, today is going to be I'm only going to do this part of it because you don't have to write a thousand word blog. You can write 200 words or you can write even 50 words or you can write just a segment of it. We'll show you exactly how to be a lot more committed when it comes to that. So we are going to take a quick break and then I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to ask you some specific questions because we're getting, we're kind of counting down to the end of our program. But I want you to understand how this is going to help you so you can take away some nuggets. This is Diana Price and we're talking about spicy business talk. We'll be right back. We're putting embarrassing products to the test.
That's okay. The owner just came in and he was like, social media week, who are you guys? Oh, we, oh, so we're having a good time. Sorry about that little thing. We want to um, ask you some questions because when I coach my clients on business development and blogging, I want them to understand that business development is not, is not, it's difficult. It's not, it's not as easy as you might think. And when you decide that you have to concentrate in business development, you know, you darn better better have a good plan. You better have an action plan and you better really put some stuff on paper so you can go back to what your plan is about, what your core, what your vision is all about. It is so important. I want to ask you some questions and I want these questions to resonate, resonate while you decide what you're going to do, if you're going to do it. And if you already have a business, if you haven't answered these questions, let's go back and and tackle them right now. Question number one, how would you explain what value your products and services provide. If someone came to you and said, I want to buy this, but I want you to tell me what value, what am I going to get out of this? What value do your products and services provide? And you have to, you really have to really be able to explain that in, you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds. You can't go on and on and on and on about it. So how would you explain what value your products and services provide, okay? That's question number one. And you need to be answering these questions while I'm asking you. Question number two, explain to me what your service vision is for your business. Do you have a service vision? Do you know what a service vision is? Do you have a customer-centric focus for everything that you do in your business? Explain to me what your service vision is, okay? I'll probably give you about 60 seconds for that. That's a little long, but (laughs) explain. So when you explain it, when you explain to someone else, you don't want to take too much time doing that. You want to be very succinct. Number three question I want you to answer for me. What are the top two challenges in your business? I normally say what are the top three, but I'm going to narrow it to two. What are the top two challenges in your business? You know, when you find out, when you decide these are the top two challenges, is it you need more revenue, you need to do more marketing? What are the top two challenges in your business? And not only do I want you to identify the top two, I want you to tell me what the heck you're doing about it. What are you doing about those two challenges in your business? Are you sitting back and saying, oh, you know, I need to do more marketing. Oh, I don't have enough sales. What are you doing about it? That's question number three. Number four, what, what are your top two opportunities? What do you think that your expertise, that you have an area, an industry that maybe you just have not gone into yet, what are your top two opportunities? And what are you doing to expose yourself and your business to these new opportunities or to create these opportunities or to develop these new opportunities? What are you doing to do that? Number five, How often do you educate yourself? How often do you read? How often do you listen? Do you participate in new ideas and forums? How often do you do that so you can grow your business knowledge and improve yourself individually? Your own personal development is huge when it comes to your business. So how often do you educate yourself? Do you know about, if if I had to answer that question, I educate myself every single day. I make it a point, the first thing in the well, not the first thing in the morning, because I already told you I go running the first thing in the morning. But when I come back, I put my, actually before I get back in my car, I turn on my phone, my iPhone, I plug it in and I listen to the tapes that I have downloaded that I need to listen to to improve my business and to prove myself. So um, what are you doing? And, you know, if you find that you have to be on the go a lot, try downloading tapes and things that you need to listen to. I say tapes. (laughs) I don't know why I said tapes. Download all this information products that you need to listen to. Put it on your iPhone so you you can really do it easily. Okay. What about your skills? How much time do you spend developing your skills, developing the skills that you are trying to make money from. How much time do you spend developing your, developing your skills? All right, continuing. If I were to look at your products and your services, if I went to your website, and if I saw the blog that you currently have, or maybe you just started, maybe you don't have a blog, let's just say that you do have a blog. 
Would you want to follow your own blog? Would you want to send someone to your website and say, hey, look at that. Oh, look at all that. Would you want to do that? So if you take a personal inventory of your stuff, would I want to follow your blog? Would you want to follow your blog? That's, that's something that you want to know. Now, what about the rest of your social media? If I went to your Twitter site, and if you're in business, yes, you need to be on Twitter. You definitely need to be on Twitter. In just a minute, I'm kind of go. I'm going to go through just the top sites that you really all need to be on. But Twitter, would I want to follow you on Twitter? What does your Twitter page look like? What do you tweet? What are you talking about? You know, are you talking about your business? Or are you talking about some other things that are completely irrelevant? All right, what are you talking about? Would I want to follow you? I have another question for you. If you have a large business, when is the last time you measured your customer experience? When is the last time you measured how your customers feel about what you do, your products, and your services? When's the last time that you got in front of your business, or maybe just on the outside, made a phone call, went online and purchased your product and purchased your services to see what the customer experience was really like? And what happened? If you haven't done that, do it. Absolutely do it. Number 10, what three words would a prospective client use to describe you and your business? What three words, and you can only say three, and then once you decide what those three words is not, no, no, wait, I shouldn't say you decide because you, that's not for you to decide. That's for a prospective client to decide. So you asked a prospective client what would they say in three words about your business. And then I want you to compare those three words about what they said about your business. Does it match what you think your business is all about? Okay? And the last one, does all of this, does the three words, does everything that I'm asking you, does it really represent your brand? Or do you need to start making some changes? Think about it. This is Diana Price, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Diana's Spicy Business Radio. Talk to you soon. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. This is Diana Price, and you're listening to Diana's Spicy Business Talk. And we are celebrating Social Media Week this week, so we've been talking about, you know, how you can benefit from social media and how you can really run your blog as a business. And I want to, there, there's a study that talks about different social media sites, actually the top social media sites, and I want to share that with you because there's some social media sites that you really should be on, but you always have to, you know, tread and everything, you know, if, if you do everything in, in moderation, you're good. But if you overdo it and, you know, then you, that's when you have problems. So there is five popular sites, and there's a lot more than five, but we're going to just talk about five right now. Guess what the number one is? Can you, can you guess Facebook? Okay. So Facebook is the fast, fastest growing online. It's, it's so popular. Everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, that so many people are on Facebook. Business people, when you go on Facebook, you're looking for a fan page. You're looking for separation of your fan page and your personal page. So as far as communication, is concerned, this report is sharing that uh, Facebook rates four uh, out of a total five points. Facebook uh, Facebook rates four as as uh, as it uh, re relates to communication. So that's communication. Now, 
Facebook as it relates to your brand, because we're talking about your brand and getting your, the word out. And the brand exposure, they also rate four out of five. That's pretty darn good for brand exposure. So when I told you about certain things that you have to do when you blog, marketing is one of those things. So brand exposure on Facebook, very, very, very good. Traffic, we talked about capturing leads and converting sales early in our program. So as far as traffic to your site, you know, guess what Facebook ranked? Three out of five, three out of five for traffic to your, to your site. So now, if you are thinking about, well, how am I going to benefit using Facebook? Well, you know, you want to be careful because you can not only benefit, but you can also hurt yourself. Uh, Facebook ha happens to, to be, you know, there's racy things on Facebook that you probably don't want to be associated with. Um, and there's things that are very, very, very good on Facebook. So, you know, you're going to benefit if you keep it to your product, if you stay focused on your business advertise specifics, give good content, you're going to benefit that way. But if you start getting racy and, you know, then you'll, you know, probably have to, to scale back a little bit. Okay. So uh, number two is LinkedIn. LinkedIn for business people is absolutely one of the best sites that you can. Freelancers, entrepreneurs, business people, if you're looking for a job, if you're looking to change jobs, you know, advertisers, LinkedIn, you really a great way to connect with people. Um, and there's so many great relationship buildings that you can do on LinkedIn. So, you know, as, and actually uh, LinkedIn is all about relationships. It's a great way to talk one-on-one -on -one to people. You can message people. You can message people on Facebook, too. Um, but, uh, you know, I just, I just love LinkedIn for, as, as far as for the business, for the business professional. And as far as communication, LinkedIn is rated three out of five. Now, Facebook was rated, what, four out of five. LinkedIn is rated three out of five. So, you know, not, not really a surprise because Facebook is so interactive. You know, you, you, it's, you, you can look at pictures, you can, and LinkedIn's not quite that way. So three out of five for communication. Brand exposure, here we go. Five out of five for LinkedIn, brand exposure. So your brand, more favorable branding on LinkedIn, five out of five, that's really cool. Traffic on LinkedIn, only one out of five. So it's not a source, a resource really to, to build traffic, okay? Um, so how can you benefit from LinkedIn? You know, if you're a job candidate, you can, you can go to, to, to sources in your industry. If you're looking to build your business, you can target market your industry. So many great ways. I'm not um, getting into everything, but I really want to share with you the top five and why you should be involved in them. Now, there's another one that is called MySpace. And MySpace is, you know, for large, diverse audiences. And you, you'll you see a lot of entertainers, musicians, a lot of independents that are all over MySpace. And it seems to be mostly entertainment industry in MySpace. So if you are in the entertainment industry, this is how MySpace rates on communication. 2.5 with communication. 2.5. Brand exposure, MySpace rates 3.5. That's not bad. It's, you know, it's not bad, but it's, it's, it's a niche. It's its own niche. Traffic to your site, MySpace ranks one out of five. So you can see right now for the first, the, the Facebook so far is, is number one. LinkedIn is number two. Um, and let's move on to Twitter. Let's move on to Twitter is another. Twitter is more micro blogging, if you if if you know what I mean. Micro blogging. Twitter only allows you 140 characters, so you can't say much. You really have to be succinct in what you say it and how you say it. So when when you go on, when you have a Twitter page, you want to be clear. Com completely clear with your intentions and your market. You know, when you tweet, when you uh, follow people, when they follow you, you want to make sure that it's your target. There's a lot of people that will automatically follow you. And the courteous thing to do when you're on Facebook, excuse me, when you're on Twitter, is to automatically follow back when you're in business. But make sure that you are following the people that are in your niche. You don't want people that have nothing to do with your market you know, it's 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 a delicate balance, and you know, we we've done we've done some some teaching on that, but I, I don't have time to do it now. But as far as communication, Twitter is five out of five. That is huge as far as communication. You can you can talk to people. I have converted sales on Twitter, so it's really good. Brand exposure, as far as Twitter is concerned, 
four out of five. Did I put five? I meant four out of five. It's pretty good. Four out of five. Traffic to your website, three out of five. You can create lists of people with your Twitter followers. It's it's huge. You can retweet. You know, that brings you a lot more exposure as well. People can retweet you. When that happens, make sure you say hello. Thank you. And you rock. <laughs> That's what I do. It's so cool. So, and the last one, well, it's not the last one, but have you heard of Dig, D-I-G-G? -G? That is a platform for a lot of news. You know, people on there rate the quality of the news and they decide what news is going to be the best. So when you use Dig, it's a, it's a kind of a different platform. Communication with Dig, Three out of five, not bad, not bad. Brand exposure, four out of five, because when you're exposed on, 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 um, when you're exposed on Dig, that means all the folks there have voted you and your content to the top. So that's pretty cool. So that's just a, a little bit about the top five. Now I didn't talk about YouTube. I didn't, there's a lot I didn't talk about today because there's just so much on the internet. But I think that, suffice it to say, you should understand now why you should be using social media to develop your brand, to develop you, and to really have a presence on. And if you're looking to change and create a lot more business opportunities for yourself, that's the way to go. If you want any more information about it, head on over to yourpocketcash.com. And this week, because it's Social Media Week, I am offering our company, Diana Price & Associates, with Spicy Business Talk. We're going to be offering you a complimentary, completely free 30-minute, I might make it 45, sometimes I go an hour, but at least a 30-minute consultation about social media and how you can get started. You've been watching Diana's Spicy Business Talk. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week at 1230 on rmconair.com. Have a great week.